What's going on guys, Jay Hoy back with you today. Welcome back to episode number four of the Chicago Blackhawks Dynasty Rebuild. As you remember last video, we built up, I guess, came to the trade deadline. And, uh, you know, nothing really major trades or moves wise. Uh, just kind of nothing on the market that was really, uh, really exciting. I did take some, uh, you know, some time off uh, recording to kind of look and, uh, you know, see what was out there. Some of the trades I try to make go through at the deadline, you know, didn't go through or, you know, just wouldn't work out or salary cap was an issue. And so, you know, we couldn't really make anything work, but we got the rest of the year. This is probably going to be the most uh, difficult part of the year because we're at the bottom of the, uh, I actually clicked on the wrong thing. I meant to click on the standings, but um, 26, 31 and six. However, we're also 7-2-1 in the last 10. So, take that with a grain of salt. But, obviously, we want our team to stop playing well so we can get a higher draft pick. Now, if I remember correctly, we do have a first-round pick and potentially a second. I don't remember. And I also can't check, which is what I did before the video. I was trying to look at uh, some of the prospects that were coming up. But uh, we have 58 points this year, which puts us in... Uh, would be the bottom like bottom five i think it was if we i think we did this last episode too but uh just in case you guys have not seen it uh let's go to the entire league go to the bottom chicago blackhawks so we're basically yeah we're bottom five in the league with 58 points so uh also we have florida's pick so florida i think was actually doing quite well yes so uh what we might end up doing is if we get uh you know a good pick this year and there's nothing really we want. I might trade it for next year's first from whatever team to try to get uh, Lafreniere. I think it's how you pronounce it. Uh, the good left winger that's up next year. And, uh, you know, absolutely, he'd be huge for our team. Obviously, left wing, uh, he'd be pretty solidified on the left-hand side there since we don't really have anyone other than Saad there as uh, kind of like a, a staple but uh, yeah, bottom five in the league, not doing too great. Hopefully we start losing a little bit more so our pick can become even higher. Uh, that first round pick from Florida, I might end up trading that at the draft. We'll see depending on uh, what's going to happen there. But this video is only going to be the rest of the regular season. And then the video after this will be the off season, the entire off season, uh, the draft, the re-sign stage, um, the off, or I guess uh, free agency and uh, we'll probably simulate up to the uh, the preseason. So one thing I haven't talked about yet is how I'm going to work kind of injuries. I do want to play uh, with injuries on at some point. But right now, the first year, I kind of wrote it down as the first year, I didn't want to do any injuries because it would kind of be no point because I don't really have my own players, right? I'm just kind of dealing with what I have. So uh, after this year, after the trade deadline next year, we will be turning on injuries for the rest of the regular season and for the uh, the playoffs. So, um, you know, just kind of a different look. Assuming we make the playoffs. If we don't make the playoffs, I'll just turn them back off uh, at the end of the regular season. But without further ado, let's get into it here. Uh, the rest of April and into the rest of the year. So we started at 26, 31, and 6. Probably should write that down. But, uh, yeah, our team just definitely needs to stop performing so we can have a, a better pick. Uh, meetings available. Don't care about that. HL team still doing well. We brought up Yoki Haru. Uh, put him in the lines. Swapped up some of our lines just to kind of see how people worked. Essentially just kind of nothing too crazy. Didn't bring up anyone. But um, just kind of seeing how we play. But alright. So we're losing more than we're winning. That's good. I, I mean I hate to say it. But that's kind of good. But, uh, you know, we kind of need to lose out the rest of the year. So that way we can get a, a top pick. Now, also, we could be kind of blessed with a number one overall pick. Even with being in the top, or in the bottom five. Looks like we're going to end up with 40 losses here. If uh, if we lose a game. There we go. So, what are we going to end with? We got two games left. Alright, so we end with... Is that the final record? I think it might be. 34, 40, and 8. So we had, let's see, let's do some, let's do some math here. So we ended this season on a eight, nine, and two streak. <laughs> I wish it was two, 
like only two wins. But hey, you never know. But 76 points at the end of our first year. Uh, you know what? Central Division is pretty stacked in its own right. But 76 points. That still leaves us in, uh, what would it be, fifth place? I think we're still bottom five in the league. But uh, we'll get to the standings in a second. We'll look through all the stats to see where we struggled. But let's get to the team leader in points. I guess all the, the points leaders, all the stats through this screen. And then we'll get into the standings after this. So let's get right into it. No surprise who's on top. Patrick Kane. I mean... It's strange that we have kind of like a core four of good players, such as Taves, Saad, Dabrinkak, and Kane, and yet we can't really squeak out the playoffs. But you look at the rest of our team, obviously they're struggling somewhere. But uh, really surprised about some of these players, like even Kajula, 47 points, play on the third line. So, I mean, that's good, but... We wanted to lose this year. So I was kind of hoping they w wouldn't do nearly as well as they did. Uh, Anise about 47 points. Strom, big, I guess not, not a rookie year, but uh, a big, I guess, kind of first year in the NHL. For, first full year in the NHL. How about that? But uh, 45 points. You love to see it. He already grew one overall since we last checked on him. Uh, Kruger, Hayden, Camp, yeah, whatever about them because, you know, fourth line at this moment doesn't really mean much. But uh, good to see. I mean... Keith, obviously on top. The plus minus is an issue for everyone, so I'm not going to mention that. Uh, Johnson, we picked him up this year. Yoki Haru, I'm happy with those stats. Two, uh, like 14 points in 44 games. You give him a full year, that could be like 25 points. So, hey, that's not bad. You know, that'd be right up there with Keith numbers. Then we got Connor Murphy, uh, Gustafson down here, and Dahlstrom. Uh, you know what? It's uh, it's kind of whatever until we, uh, until we rebuild our team and kind of get better pieces in to the franchise. But goaltenders, no one really performed well. I mean, Forsberg were just brought up recently, so I can't really give him much crap there. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the HL team. Just kind of scroll through it real quick because uh, it doesn't really matter. But uh, you can kind of see some of the guys that were uh, were in the lineup. Some of the guys I also put in you know, later in the year just to kind of get them playing time, just to see if they would do any better than uh, some of the guys that were in uh, you know, for the most of the season. That's why all the games played numbers are kind of screwed up a little bit. But uh, Forslund, that's actually a pretty darn good year for the 22-year-old. Uh, I think he's up. Yeah, his contract's up this year, so we'll have to reassign him. Really hoping he stays with us because that would be an absolutely key piece of uh, the future of our defenseman. On to our forwards. You know, uh, no one really is sticking out. I mean, some guy's doing well, obviously, but 73 games played. The highest we have is 49 points. Um... You know, they, they kind of did decent throughout the year, but definitely expected them to do a little bit better than uh, than what it shows. But our goaltenders at the end of the year kind of kind of didn't perform either. So they started out good, but then kind of the tides turned, and and uh, they kind of struggled at the end of the year too. So they're out of the playoffs as well. So uh, not really too much to talk about there. But all right, let's get into the standings here, see where we went wrong besides kind of everything. But uh, we're going to go full uh, full league and uh, and see what's what. So we end up finishing in 26th place. Also, we'll look at the uh, the, pre uh, the playoff bracket and uh, see who's in there, see what the matchups are, give our predictions real quick. But uh, we end up with 76 points. That's I'm better than I wanted to, obviously. I'd prefer to be in the bottom three. But uh, we finished with a record of 34, 40, and 8. Kind of whatever. I mean, we sucked all year. Goals for 226. That's interesting. So uh, we're, I mean, right in the middle of the, uh, right in the middle of the pack as far as 226 goes. I mean, we're right around playoff teams with those numbers. Um, goals against. We are, what did I say, 26? Yeah, so uh, we allotted a lot of goals this year. I mean, to be expected with a team that didn't really do too well. Power play goals, somehow we're at the top. I mean, we have uh, good players on our power play. Power play percentage, this is probably at the bottom, I guess. Actually, it's the middle of the pack with uh, with Pittsburgh leading it. Interesting. Shorthanded goals, don't really care. Uh, penalty kill percentage. So we had a actually pretty decent penalty kill. That's what, top, what I think, I think it's top 10, I think that is. And then uh, you can see our records here at the end. So 16, 21, and 4 at home. 18, 19, and 4 away. And the last 10 was uh, 4, 5, and 1. 
So all around, definitely not a good year for us. I mean, it's a rebuild. I mean, that's uh, exactly what a rebuild is. But let's go on. Let's see who's in the playoffs here. Simulate a couple of days on here and uh, and see what happens here. So our HL team's still in it uh, in this regular season. But uh, I will also say... After we get done here looking at all the stats, I'm going to simulate up to the draft because it doesn't really matter. We'll check on retirements. Actually, no, we won't check on retirements in this. Well, actually, we can check on retirements in this video. But uh, playoffs from the Western Conference, Colorado versus St. Louis, Winnipeg versus Calgary, the LA Kings versus Anaheim Ducks, and San Jose versus Minnesota. Really good matchups there. In the Eastern Conference, ooh, this is a battle of... A lot of good teams. Pittsburgh and Washington. First matchup. Oh my goodness. Philadelphia versus Detroit. Tampa Bay versus Toronto. That's going to be a good matchup. And then Florida versus the Rangers. Great matchups all around. Uh, we're not in the AHL uh, playoffs yet. But um, we're not in it. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, let's simulate up to retirement. See if anyone retires. And then we'll end the video off there. The playoffs are now complete. The champions, we got the St. Louis Blues for the Stanley Cup in the NHL. Calder Cup champions, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. Uh, you know, two very good organizations in the right. We will look at the bracket here in a second and uh, and check out the matchups. Because we, we did see a lot of really, really good matchups in the, uh, in the playoffs. So let's go take a look. Let's start out on the Western Conference. So we got St. Louis beating uh, Colorado for nothing. Sweep or swept them. Winnipeg swept Calgary. Uh, Anaheim beat LA four two. San Jose beat Minnesota four one. So uh, only two sweeps so far. Then we got St. Louis beating Winnipeg four to two. Anaheim taking the game seven versus San Jose four three. Western Conference Finals. Wow. So. <laughs> St. Louis was on a roll. I mean, they were, what, 12-2 and two up until the Stanley Cup Finals. That's incredible. Let's go over the Eastern Conference now. We got Pittsburgh versus Washington, the one matchup everyone wanted to see. Pittsburgh takes that one 4-2. Philadelphia beat Detroit. Okay. Then we got Toronto taking a Game 7 versus Tampa Bay. And then Florida beating the Rangers 4-1. to Wow. Some of those, have, actually, three of those are kind of, well, two of them are kind of shocking. The the bottom two, at least. Then we got Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia. Another really good matchup. Philly takes that one somehow against uh, against Pittsburgh. 4-1. to Toronto beats Florida 4-2. Four, uh, then we got Toronto taking out Philadelphia in a Game 7. Stanley Cup Finals, we got the St. Louis Blues versus Toronto Maple Leafs. A Game 7 to decide it. Absolutely crazy. I mean, 4-3. Quick look at the AHL bracket. Not going to go too much into it. But uh, there it is. So if you want to pause it and look, there you go. If not, we're going to move on to, uh, to whatever else we're going to do here. But uh, yeah, overall, not a good year. Um... That's what the rebuild's for. Obviously, you don't want to have a great year. You want the uh, the best pick possible. But uh, here we go. So picks-wise, Chicago, number two. That's huge. We are number two uh, overall pick. That's fantastic. Boston got number one. Vancouver, uh, the Islanders. Okay, so Islanders were the worst team in the NHL. Uh, Colorado with that big pick there. New Jersey, Vegas, okay. So we have number two, and then whatever Florida finished at. So uh, they were they definitely made the playoffs. I don't remember what I said. Uh, I think they lost. No, they beat in the so they be second. So they'd be like later teens, early twenties, I think. But uh, that's great, number two overall. Although I'd love it for next year. Um, you know what? We'll uh, we'll hope we get someone good this year, and potentially get someone next year. Uh, retired players. Let's go into it. So notable names. Zetterberg, obviously. Uh, Cam Larry, Horton. All right. So uh, anyone from our team. So uh, Chicago. So no skaters. Goaltenders. No goaltenders. So let's go take a look at all of the goaltenders. Since we took a look at all the skaters. And um, no goalies. So the net stays protected. Franzen and Cam Larry are both now scouts. Interesting. 
Uh, we also do need to figure out our whole scouting situation. But our pro scout... Uh, let's see. So we will throw... Actually, is our first for next year? Let's, actually, this is the first time we can go look. So uh, draft picks. So we have the... Uh, why is it not sorted by overall? Or by uh, year, I mean. So this year we have a first, a second... A fourth, three fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. Wow, that is hard to read. Uh, but all right, so the second overall pick this year. Next year, we have two first round picks. So, regardless of what happens next year, I have a feeling we'll do pretty well. If we go into another rebuild year of, uh, you know, gathering prospects and picks, you know, even if we have to trade both of our first round picks up to get Lafreniere, I'd still be happy. But uh, next year, we got second, third. And we got a couple extra picks there. So I'm excited. I mean, number two overall pick, uh, second, I guess, second round pick of 58th. I really wish they would spread that out so you can actually read it. But uh, oh well. So we got a bunch of good picks, and uh, we're excited. So let's do the trade block real quick, and then we'll wrap up the video. So as far as on the block, now I'm going to put some guys on here that I don't necessarily want to get rid of, but if we can make some room for some guys. That would be uh, that'd be fantastic. So also, I want to move Dabrinkak to a right wing, so that way he doesn't show up as a center, just for kind of myself's sake. So uh, Kruger's up this year. That's perfect. Might resign him to a one-year deal, and hopefully a lot less money. Uh, Anisimov, four, uh, three more years at 4.5. We'll throw him up there just in case uh, we can get anything for him. Rather, you know, get rid of the bad contracts now. Rather than before we get, uh, not screwed over with them, but, um, these contracts are all fine. Uh, Perlini is up this year. He's probably won a lot of money. Uh, right wings, no one really here I want to get rid of. Uh, obviously, Kane we want to keep. Defensemen. Um, now we could throw both Keith and Johnson up there if we really wanted to. But, uh, what is this contract? 3.85 for four more years. Um, let's throw you up there, because that contract's terrible. So, uh, we'll just get rid of that if we can. Uh, goaltenders are fine. I mean, we don't really have anyone beyond our... So that's definitely going to be a focus, is uh, getting depth and uh, acquiring prospects. Because we're lacking in some areas. Uh, surplus. Well, uh, let's just clear all this. So surplus, as far as picks go... I don't want to get rid of any picks if I don't have to. Um, surplus for future. No picks. Uh, I guess we'll throw... We'll leave on future fourth. Cause fourth plus. That looks fine. The only thing I'll put on here, I guess, is pending free agents. Just in case. Uh, anyone really wants any pending free agents. Uh, and then do I... Uh, no. We don't really have any, um, you know, just older people. So we'll just leave that like that. So pending UFAs and uh, future force fourth plus I should say is uh, what our surplus is as far as wants go we want every pick ever <laughs> and then future picks we want every pick uh, we'll leave off future force because you know that's already on a surplus so it wouldn't really make sense to trade a future fourth round pick for a fourth round pick or something like that so that's usually what the computer does but as far as wants go we want forwards preferably let's just say under under 26 uh, I think that's top nine, and then we'll go with skater rating, or I guess rating of 80, let's go above 80. So I think that's what, top nine? Yeah, top nine, above 80 overall. Uh, defense, I'll probably put on, you know, top six as far as player role, or uh, I guess potential, we'll put that under. But uh, we'll put that at 29. Put that there. Medium. We'll do the same thing. Above 80. Uh, hopefully we get some good picks there. I do want prospects, obviously, too. I just wish there was more spaces on the uh, on the trade block of uh, what we want. But then we'll put under here that we want... Uh, let's see. We have a couple of... I don't even know what I want. Uh, we, can we do all skaters? Is that a thing? No. So we will put... We'll put defenseman... Age max at 21, so we can get some good prospects in there. We'll get a top six, medium, 
and then we'll put this at, not acceleration, overall at 62. So that, sh that should give us a, someone decent if they want to trade that for us. Also, we want NHL players, obviously. And then uh, hopefully we can get something. So, uh, you know, if we do clear up these two contracts, we'll have tons of cap room. Uh, obviously, we have to resign some players upcoming here as well. But, uh, yeah, we're at the draft. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Uh, like I said, not a great year, but that was kind of the point is uh, not to have a great year. We got, you know, some priorities to do. I'm going to go through, kind of look at some prospects, see where uh, what prospects we really want this year. And uh, kind of scout out some players in the draft for uh, for guys to go for. But uh, anyway, like I said, guys, this is it for today's video. If you did enjoy, hit the like button down below. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button. And as always, guys, we'll see you next time.